Hello all, as we look at our final exercise of chapter 4, which is solutions of literal equations and systems of equations, and in particular we're now doing this when uh, they are non-linear. So we've done this, before, uh, done this before, it's the year 11 stuff, and it was a bit in chapter 2 and a little bit in quadratics. Um, but we're taking a step further. So just as a reminder, what is a literal equation? Well, a literal equation is where it's an equation that has mainly pronumerals, or it is mainly has um, has letters for most of the variables, or for most of the coefficients. So we've been maybe looking at maybe 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus uh, or x maybe minus 7 something like that now instead we're going to make this more literal which means that we might be dealing with uh, k x cubed plus d x minus we could have a c it could still have some numbers in there but what we're moving towards is we're now going to have a more I guess it's a more general form we're going to try and solve when we've got more general forms and just recognizing that the k is still just representing a number it's a, a pronumeral it's still a coefficient it's just a placeholder and so and as we change k that whole equation is going to change out what it looks like same if maybe we change d a lot of the time we're not going to have all different uh pronumerals it might be something like this okay and then it's asking us to solve a situation f f solve to figure out what k is or x is going to Instead of, oh, sorry, I've got myself tongue tied. With this one, we may have zero equals. We get a situation where we're going to find x is equal to some number. Um, who knows? It might be like three on two. Okay. In this case, in a literal equation, we our point's just freezing up for a second here. We're working towards getting x equals something. It might have a k. It'll have the k in there now because there was k's for the coefficients it might be k on three instead this time um, so we're still trying to figure out what x is equal to but it'll be equal to something that has a variable or pronumeral in it all our strategies are still the same and our skills still need to say we still need to be able to work with algebraic fractions we still need to be able to use the quadratic formula we still need to be able to complete the square we'll be using the discriminant lots um, remembering index rules um, to make stuff easier and then also simultaneous equations and mainly we'll do substitution because we'll have we'll be trying to find intersections or lines so that's generally subst substitution is generally the best tool to use there right here so some key words that we need to re remember um when we're trying to find po point of intersections almost always you'll use simultaneous equations to find the x value once you've found the x value, you need to sub that back into one of the one of the equations to find the y value. Um, also, something to be aware of is that you can get more than one solution. If you get a plus or minus in there, that means technically we could write this as negative two plus root seven. X is equal to as one solution, but x is also equal to negative two minus root seven. That's a second solution. So you have to substitute them both in separately and get the matching y values um, and you'll have two coordinates of intersection. Now, whenever we see the word touches, okay, that imp implies that the two lines just touch and they touch once. Uh, so we may have a situation where we have, you know, it's maybe a quadratic like this, and then we have a linear coming past and it just touches. If it says it just touches, that's implying it's crossing or intersecting just once. So once we make those, those two equations equal to each other and then rearrange it, we get some equation that's equal to zero because it's intersecting only once, um, this intersection equation, the discriminant of that needs to be equal to zero because there's only one solution. Similarly to this, if we see the word intersects, that's implying it's crossing twice. So in that case, our linear equation will come through like this. And since it's intersecting or has intersections, it, 
it's assuming that it's crossing twice and same thing once we do us make the two equations equal to each other rearrange so that we get something that's equal to zero of this equation the discriminant of that needs to be greater than zero because there needs to be two solutions because there's two points of intersections okay uh when there's questions that say find the condition or there is the word condition there implies that um, your solution will be in the form of an equation or in inequality. So you might get a, b plus c is equal to zero or a needs to be, or x needs to be less than a. Um, so you need to work these out in the literal sense. So again, you're still trying to figure out what x is equal to. Um, and once you've gotten to a point where you can't really rearrange it, you need to then think about like what we did with quadratic inequalities, you might rearrange it and figure out that the graph looks like this and you need the situation where X needs to be greater than zero. So you then uh, read off what, or sorry, you might need Y greater than zero. Um, you just need to then think about um, when can that actually occur? Well, in this case, this may have been a two and that might've been negative one. So in this case, X maybe need to be greater than two or X needs to be less than negative one. Um, our situation with same, but we might be trying to figure out when K is greater than zero. So that's what some of those words mean. A really quick reminder, and we spent a lot of time in the previous video going over this, so I'm not gonna go over this too long, but if we need to find points of intersections and it's CAS active, use your CAS, just solve the simultaneous equations using your CAS straight away. There's a quick reminder how to do it. It's this key button here, which is the solver of simultaneous equations. Stick your two equations in and say what variables. You need to say what variables you're trying to solve for. Um, and you'll get it. So let's do a quick practice. Um, pause the video here now to have a go at finding the points of intersection between these two. And I'll also do it on the CAS in a second. Okay, so our equations was y equals 3x. So uh, we need the keyboard, we want to solve system of equation. And our first one was y equals 3x minus 1, y equals 3x minus 1. Our other one is x squared plus y squared equals 16 and we want to find x and y and now we're going to get multiple solutions and it's actually asking us correct two decimal places so I could take that out as clicking on the standard down here ch changes in the decimal form enter here we go so x is equal to negative 9.6 and the y for that one is negative 3.88 and then as we go across we'll see there's another point of intersection so this one actually has two points of intersections which makes sense we're dealing with a think about a straight line and a circle so we've got some situation circle line going through it points of intersection or actually the one's positive gradient it's going up through that way so reading off the CAS, we got x is negative 0 0.96, negative 0 0.96. Our y value was negative 3.88, 3.88. And the other point of intersection is 1.56, 1.56. Three point six eight, and that's really important to recognise that there can be multiple points of intersection. As soon as you see an arrow here, um, sometimes even when we're dealing with a like I guess a more real world problem, we can't have a negative x maybe. So we need to go. Okay, that's actually not our solution. We need to keep going across and look for one that actually does work. That's using our CAS. Quick reminder. Um, and the last bit here, I'm not, it's good practice to work a 
to actually solve these to try and figure out in this case solve this so we're trying to figure out what x is equal to you want to get x is equal to something same here we want to get x is equal to something um, try and find the points of intersection so we're going to get coordinates maybe one maybe two maybe more depending on how big how high the order of the polynomials is um, so it's good to do this but these examples on this slide the next one on I just want to think about what's the actual process you would use. Look at the problem and think, okay, how am I going to figure out what X is in each of these? Or how am I going to find the coordinates of the intersection? So pause the video, give yourself some time, think about how you go about it, and then I'll tell you what's probably the most efficient way to go at this. And you can also look in, I've stolen a bunch of these from the textbook, so you can look in the textbook for the full solutions how to do it. So the first one, when you've got a literal quadratic equation, I would just use the quadratic formula, okay? Uh, you could also try and do it by completing the square, but the quadratic formula will also give you this, you'll find the discriminants part of it, so you'll know what are the conditions for this to actually have real solutions. Um, so yeah, any literal quadratic, uh, use the quadratic formula. For B, Key thing to note here is B's technically a constant, C's a constant, A's a constant or coefficient, and this is our only X term. So we'll just do this algebraically. Um, just move things around to try and get the X by itself. So real quickly to explain what that is, we'd get AX cubed is equal to C minus B. I've just moved the B across. I'm then gonna move the A across C minus B on A. And then I get x is equal to the cube root of c minus b on a. And that's the answer. That's as far as we can go. Um, so don't freak out when you see all those letters there. Just look, are there some x is next to them? If there's not, well then, a lot of time we can just solve it algebraic. We, we C, finding points of the intersection. We're going to do simultaneous equations and going to do substitution sub one equation into the other in this case we've actually got y minus 4 is equal to x so we could substitute this y minus 4 in everywhere where there's an x in here and then solve to figure out what the y is um, and you can do this either by hand or by calculator but um, or you could also rearrange this second equation so that's y equals x plus 4 and substitute it in for that y there. Um, so there's two ways you can do the simultaneous substitution for that one. Again, pause the video if you need a second and have a look at these and think how you're going to figure it out. Right, so for D, find the points of intersection of the circle with that equation and the line with the equation x minus y equals zero. Same thing, it's points of intersection. Uh, I would rearrange this equation so that you get x is equal to zero plus y, so you just get x is equal to y. Substitute that into this one. Um, simultaneous equation and you can do it by hand or calculator. If it's CAS active, just do it with your CAS. Okay, part E, probably the trickier one. For what values of A would x squared plus 2ax plus 9 be divisible by x plus a? So we're asking, when is it divisible? That means we're asking when it is a factor. So I'm hoping you're thinking along the lines of either a couple of things might come to head. You might try and do long division. Uh, you might try something like the remainder theorem or the factor theorem. Because okay? it's divisible if the remainder is equal to zero. So we do, we would substitute in x equals negative a because we have plus a or, yeah, substitute in 
because we let x plus a equal 0, so we get x is equal to negative a. So we substitute in x equals negative a into this, and then once it's substituted in, you'll get some equation, and you need that you need that to eventually give us 0. Um, we need that once we've done the substitution, we need all that equation equals 0 um, in line with the remainder theorem. So to do this one would be the remainder theorem. You want to see how to go about that. Where's the example? Oh, there isn't one in the textbook. I was just looking through for the textbook for that one. Um, oh, no, I want to keep. Let's go back. Uh, what have we got? 15 minutes. I'll show you how to do this really quickly since there's. Oh, go back. No, don't. Playing up. Okay. So. All the pen markings. Okay, I'm going to have to go over here. Yeah, you can end the video now, but I'm going to show you how to do this one quickly. So we're letting x equal to negative a, we're substituting that in, so we get negative a all squared plus 2a by negative a plus 9, so we get a squared plus uh, minus 2a squared plus 9, so we get negative a squared plus 9, okay, and for it to be a factor, Okay, to be divisible, that means the remainder needs to be equal to zero. So this that we substituted in, that whole thing needs to be equal to zero. So we get a nine is equal to a squared. So we get a is equal to plus or minus square root of nine. So a is equal to plus or minus three. So if we make a equal to plus or minus three, this, we can then do x divide, we can then make that whole quadratic is divisible by x plus or minus three. That's the only time that occurs. So that's how you do that problem quickly. That's it for this video and that's it for the whole topic. Um, so you've got to do exercise 4H and then you also need to make your way through the chapter review questions. If I go back to the very start, what does it pretty much says it pretty much just says do more more practice that you can get the better um so you need to go through that if you're struggling with some of the chapter review questions because some of them are really hard please 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 let me know and i can do in uh, short videos on how to do each one and i'll also share the work solutions for this chapter shortly that's it have a good day um, if you have like always if you have questions put in the comments below or in google classroom or send me an email